Have you ever missed a big fight due to stream buffering? Because with IP Vanish, you don't have to. IP Vanish offers high speed encrypted connections to allow you to stream the fights from anywhere. IP Vanish provides a secure environment for everyday internet activity, and yes, that includes your fight watching activities. Once you establish a VPN connection, all of your online traffic passes through an encrypted tunnel while your identifying IP address remains concealed. IP Vanish combats buffering by automatically activating when internet traffic is detected. This maintains your high speed browsing so you never miss a beat. Subscribe right now to IP Vanish so you never miss out on the big fights. He's back. Nick Diaz. Now, what would you do if I told you I knew this? You wanna know how I knew this? My old source, you guys know what I'm gonna to say? Tommy from the Bronx. Tommy from the Bronx knows, knows everything going on, Diaz, brother. I could call the Diaz brothers and they would tell me, even if they swore me to secrecy, I could call Gilbert, he, he'd let me know, even if it's like, hey man, you know. Make sure you don't say anything, it's not reported yet. I don't ask Gilbert, I don't bother the boys. I go to Tommy and he knows every time. <laughs> I don't know how he knows, man. So, Nate Diaz, I apologize, Nick Diaz is back fighting Luque. Now, don't worry about the X's and O's of this fight. I mean, th there's a couple of interesting things, right? I believe Luque is coming off a loss. I'm thinking of the last fight that I that I saw him have. He's coming off a loss. I think he's coming off of a couple of them. Nick is coming off a loss, and it was a period of time ago. And in fact, I think it's coming off a couple of them. And they're a co-main event. So look, you got to start with that. That is one of the most interesting things. They moved it to five rounds. Now, they moved it to five rounds for a few reasons, one of which, if you can get Nick Diaz, who you guys absolutely love. You want to talk about popular fighters? You're, you're talking about a top, a top three. The reason we don't talk about him, I thought he was gone. I thought he was retired. I mean, it, just in case you fall this down, you go, Chael, you can't call him a top three now. You said it was Connor and George Monstral and Nate. It's like, well, I, okay, but we thought Nick was gone, right? I mean, I'm just, I'm just sharing for you. Okay, great. If you can get him for five rounds when the crowd loves him and haven't got to see him, get, get him for five rounds. Secondly, now that makes sense. That's a good thing. But, but, but secondly, to make believe that Nick, like anybody else, got better at something by not doing it. It's just a stretch, right? And Luke has been really busy. He's been really busy. So to help correct that, at least within the audience minds, you do something that supports Nick, which is you make it five rounds. And where, where I'm asking you, is that right? I think so for perception, yeah. I think a lot of people read that and said, oh, five rounds. You know, now well, Luke has been a little more active. He might do well early, but you know, that's Nick. He's a triathlete and uh, five rounds is really going to help him. Is that right? I mean, it's like anybody with the cardio athlete. It's, it's one of those things you got to be busy and you got to be doing it, generally speaking. And we, we don't actually know how busy Nick has been. His social media, and he's never known to troll anyone. That's just not what he's known to do. And his social media says he's been at it a while. Looked like he was going to box. You can follow him on Instagram. He's always doing something. It's always boxing related. Whether it's a heavy bag, it's a speed bag. It's a comment that he makes. You know, it always kind of lends towards boxing. But we don't know how long he's been at it. And uh, a real telltale sign of this fight is going to be not until they weigh in. A real telltale sign of Nick's last fight. Just to remind you guys, that was against Robbie Lawler. And it was fight week. Everybody travels the same day. Doesn't matter if you're coming from a different country, you're coming from one state over. Travel day is Tuesday. Travel back home, everybody goes the same day, which is Sunday. On travel day is when Nick made the phone call that I don't want to do 170 pounds. And there was a weight class, I believe, of 178 pounds. And now that ended up not happening. They just bumped it all the way. They made it 185. But the 178, the suggested 178 is very relevant. 
that would at least make us believe, okay, Nick was at 178, didn't want to go anymore, or, or Nick believed he could get to 178. And how come? How come not all the way to 170? Started too late, wasn't feeling like it, but there's a lot of answers. But they don't have to be good, bad, or indifferent. It's just a matter of how come. Now, when that fight started with Robbie and that fight ended, I remember my thoughts. And my thoughts specifically were, Nick doesn't know how well he was doing. Nick has found himself in a really hard battle. It was harder than the first time. But he doesn't know. It's, it's not a matter of this fight is harder than he thought it was going to be. It was a matter of he doesn't know how well he is doing. As a matter of fact, Nick won the round. The first round was completed. And when they went to the judges, two of the three had it for Nick. And I, I just know Nick never made an excuse. He would probably never get him to talk about that. But if you did, and he was really talking candidly, he didn't know he won that round. He didn't know he was winning that fight. He was taking a lot of punches. He was just discounting that he was delivering more. It was an interesting match. If you disagree with me on that, I'd love to hear from you, but I do have that right about the judges. And I know that I have that right because I made that comment instantly. And then it got supported. And then you, the public, supported me too. You go, yeah, he was he was doing great. And then it just comes a matter of duration. Where, where's your cardio at? Well, you know, what, what can you do as a fighter? You're constantly taking inventory. So if you're halfway through the fight and you know, okay, everything I've done, I've got 100% more of that to go. I've got, to, I've got to do double it just to finish this fight. That's where your mind starts to begin the checkout process. And we've never seen that from Nick. And because he's so quiet and because he doesn't make excuses, he didn't let us in on any idea. what we, we don't know why. We don't know if he was getting fatigued. It didn't look like it. I imagine he was because it's a fight, but he didn't look like it. He didn't start backing up. He didn't start wilting. The part that was completed, he had won. I don't think he knew that. I think he thought this is going worse, but was it a fatigue issue? That's a massive question, guys. Can he make the weight? If he can make the weight, if he can make 170, at least in theory, it would speak to him working harder him being more disciplined and being in better shape, which is where you come back and you look at that five rounds and you say, yeah, yeah, that's a good, that's a good thing for Nick. But the perception and the reality can be different. I think, I think that it's a, a massive talking point. There's only a few fights in history that were co-main events and non-title matches that they made five rounds. And what do you know? I believe the first one they ever did was Nate Diaz. Nate versus Leon. And they've done a few. I, I know that they have, but now they're doing it again. They're doing it with Nick. And I know perception is that that is going to serve him well. I know Tommy from the Bronx thinks it's going to serve him well. I'm not here to tell you you're wrong. But aside from the fight itself, okay, we are going to have a much clearer and stronger opinion one way or the other the weigh-in. 